Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of BC Buckets. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Colin, today we have Ryan Dunn, a sophomore from Virginia, 21 years old, six foot seven, and a lot of people are saying he's the best defender in this draft. What say you? He's probably the best defender in this draft. I'd say that, which okay. is incredible <laughs> for us saying that this player might not go in the first round because, despite being the first, best defender in the draft, and that's because he has no. What well, feels like semblance in an off offensive game. Look, he's going to go number one or number one first round in my draft. Okay. Oh, he's going to go first round in my draft too. But like, I'm saying there's a chance. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, there's there a is chance. a chance. There is a chance. 34 games, played 27 and a half minutes, um, eight points, seven boards, 2.3 blocks, and 1.3 steals per game. 55% shooting, but 20% from three, 53% from the free throw line. Um, this. Dude, and for those who haven't, I don't know, maybe don't watch college basketball, Virginia is known for their defense and their slow pace, right? Like, that's what that's what they're known for. Um, I can't remember. I'm going to have to go back and look to see when I've seen a better defensive prospect. Well, Victor Wimbanyama. Excluding that, like, a defensive prospect on the wing that is this impactful and this fun to watch. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm not ashamed of saying it. Like his, I, it's not just highlight. I went and watched the full Virginia versus Texas A&M game, and I'd seen some Virginia games throughout the year. But like, I went back and watched the full Virginia versus Texas A&M game, and I think he was the best player on the court. Yeah, it was like twelve points, like five rebounds, six blocks, th two two or three steals, like everywhere on the court against the most physical team in the country, Texas A&M. And I'm here like seven two wingspan. 38 and a half inch vertical. He is literally everywhere. And I trust him like on the perimeter. I trust him in the paint. I trust him help side. I trust him on ball. I just, the defensive ability is outstanding. I, I can't, I can't say enough good things about that. So I'll let you talk. Well, you just said everything on defense. That's really good. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say the, the couple things that I like on the offensive end, um, I guess the single thing, um, and that would be his just cutting ability. I feel like he's able to use as his athleticism to find open areas on the defense and just slash and cut to the basket, which is good because it's kind of right now, the only thing that he can do um, offensively, obviously in transition that helps um, as well, but assertiveness can become an issue on that end. Um, no, he doesn't, there's, he just doesn't look at the rim a lot of times. Yeah. Like yeah. at all. Like yeah. he just there are possessions. I think I texted my I texted one of my other friends um in the second in like the last ten minutes of the game against AM, I think he touched the ball like five times. <laughs> like it I don't and maybe I'm a little off on that, but like it's not much. Like yeah. I I skipped through offensive possessions. I mean he only had a sixteen point eight percent usage percentage. So yeah. For a player who's like brawny kind of numbers. <laughs> For a player who's been as impactful as him, it's it's crazy to see him on the offensive and not be able to, I, I guess, affect a game. Um, I guess we'll just get straight into weaknesses. Um, the main thing that's well, gonna... I have one. Wait, oh, I you have think, one more positive. I do, I do think rebounding. I do think he's a good rebounder. Oh yeah, I, I kind of include that with defense. I mean, seven rebounds a game. Yeah, like like I uh, offense and defense. I think he's a good rebounder. So that, that's that's very important if he's gonna, because he's gonna have to be great at the things that he's good at. Yeah, and absolutely. That's important um but weaknesses and the main thing that is going to kind of keep him on the court is going to be a shooting uh not keep a great shooter keep him well on and off i guess okay um but he needs to get his shooting better is what i'm saying if he wants to stay on the court like that's going to keep him on the court is able if he's able to shoot um my main concern with his shot we can talk about his numbers shot 20 percent from three on one attempt a game uh during the combine it was really bad uh, three thirty six percent on moving threes, and then oh, sorry, yeah, thirty six percent on moving threes, and then thirty two percent on standing. Thirty still. yes, eight yeah, twenty five, yeah, eight to twenty five on standing still threes. So not helping himself there. For me, he has to be able to knock down like if he has to try to get that up to like thirty percent, thirty one percent for me to like even imagine him being on the court because the main thing he can be a great defender he could be an elite defender all defensive type defender in the nba but he's not going to be a player that you're going to build your team around of shooters yeah. to keep him on the court and that's yeah. my main concern and then when you get to playmaking like he's basically one for one and assist to turnovers so he's not going to be good with the ball in his hand and he's not assertive enough to take the ball to the rack 
unless it's in transition. And even then it's kind of shaky. And when he gets fouled, he's 50% from the line. Yeah, exactly. 50, 53% from the line. So what do, what do you see? Because we can just sit here and, you know, trash his <laughs> offensive ability. What do you think he has, is capable of doing at the next level, given some time? So this is the hard part. Um, you do wonder, you know, if the three-point shooting, like it would have to be the right situation. Like three-point shooting will take years and years if to just get to a respectable level. Like, to even get to where like Derek Jones Jr. is right now as a shooter, which I think he's like 35%. Mm-hmm. Um, but we see, you know, in the finals and in the playoffs in general, like very, very inconsistent. So it's like just to get to that level, it's gonna take probably six years, like five years. Like we're not we're talking about a long-term project. He just needs to be more aggressive. Um having that type of athleticism and that type of above the rim ability and not being more aggressive is just really tragic because if you put your head down, you don't have to make that complicated of reads like in the NBA. A lot of times, like a lot of, if the help is there, you should be able to plan to control and just make an easy skip pass or a dump pass. Like, right. You know, one of those plays, but he just had, doesn't have experience in that. And so he plays real hesitant. And I do think there's something to be said about like playing at Virginia, where it is a very slow and methodical off, Offense. like imagine if he played at fill in the blank anywhere else top, <laughs> yeah tops if they're top 100 in pace instead of 363rd like and he gets a couple more of those runouts and he's averaging yeah. let's say 11 points per game instead of eight uh, i just think you know maybe that's where you hope playing in the nba where you can get a couple transition more transition opportunities that opens them up a little bit so that's my hope for him uh the shooting i don't know if it'll ever come around but um, to go to like comparisons, like the first thing you, I think of is Matisse Thibel, who came in as an awesome defender, but eventually because he could not score the ball is, you know, end of rotation guy now. Like, yeah. Point. So now it's like, it just, you can't sustain it in the league. If you can't at least put the ball in the basket sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and when I was watching him, I was like, this guy's a great defender. And he reminds me of a, Pistons great prospect Asar Thompson who although is a way better playmaker than, than Ryan Dunn but yeah is uh well he shot 18% from the from from three this year and yeah. he didn't see the court a lot of the time on the worst team in the NBA and if you're not able to get minutes on the worst team in the NBA as your first round draft pick yeah that's that's the problem so for him like you said I think he needs to be able to he's got to be able to put his head down and and one just be able to score the basket at the rim and then you can work off of that because i think it, it's just a shame if he's not able to show showcase his defense ability yeah at the next level um i did have Derek jones jr as a comp um you know just because the athleticism and defense potential um and then i have down peyton watson and this might this might be niche because peyton watson is you know in a rotation guy for the nuggets but you look at his stats in the nba and they are similar as a young guy, like steal percentage wise, like kind of rebounding that kind of player mold yeah, um, that can help a winning team a little bit. So uh, there's, there's a name. I have Herb Jones as my comp. Yeah. Except Herb Jones can shoot the leather off the ball. So that's, yeah, well that's the difference, but yes, I do see where you're going defensively. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we'll see, but yeah, that's how we got for y'all today. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will talk to y'all later. Thank <laughs> you.